Hi, Jane. You mentioned that we might need some new equipment in the office. Absolutely. What we've got is too old, and much of it is faulty. Well, you know how difficult it is to replace equipment. I guess I'll just use another requisition form. We can fill it out now. If you don't mind. I suppose you're going to complain about the printer again. Sure, my printer's bad, but the copier is almost unworkable. It jams all the time. It's too slow, and it's already been repaired four or five times. We've got to do something about it. Okay, I'll put that down on the form. So you want a copier, not a printer, and you work in accounts, right? Yes, that's right. The accounts department. Okay, but this is a requisition form. There's meant to be a limit on the length of time you can have the item. We need it forever. The old machine's almost useless. The moment it gets repaired, it breaks again. Well, I'll just write ongoing. Okay, that basically means the item will stay with us until I say otherwise. Now the next question is, when do you want it? In a few days, one week? It usually takes a while for these things to arrive. If it arrived today, it would be better. We need it as soon as possible. Can you write today? Well, it can't come that quickly. I'll just write immediately. But be warned, that means it may still take some time to get here. Perhaps a day or two. That's annoying. We've got so much unexpected demand right now. Good. I'll write that as one of the reasons. We need three reasons, you know, or they won't grant this request. So for the second reason, I'll write original broken. And that's essentially true. It is broken. The truth is always good, but can you think of one more reason? Not really. But those first two reasons are surely strong enough, aren't they? Well, I think we still need a third reason. Maybe I'll have to bend the truth a bit. I'll just write、uh, require more functions. Okay. Or you could write require faster speed. No, all these copiers operate at the same speed, so that reason won't sound true. Okay, whatever it takes. Right, and shall I put your name, Jane Huang, spelt with a U, right? Well, actually, I would say your name would be more likely to get speedier results. All right, I certainly don't mind putting my name with this, Mike Green, G R E. Just like the colour green, right? But with that final e, which often tricks people. Yes, that e at the end tricks them all the time. Actually, Jane, talking about office equipment needed, I've got a list before me of all the items purchased last year. There's certainly a lot, and I can see why the owners are getting concerned. Obviously, some things are necessary in the business, like the twenty boxes of copying paper I've just ordered. And it shows here that last year our office ordered two fax machines, which is certainly not excessive, but there's a lot of other equipment on this form which may raise questions. Yeah, but we had special circumstances, Mike. We renovated the office and had to replace all the computers and printers. Seventeen, I think. We actually got the printers from another department, so it didn't cost us. But sure, with seventeen people all needing computers, that was a considerable expense, along with the fifteen speakers and sixteen headphones. Why did we need those? Everyone was using Skype to communicate with clients. They still do, of course. It's a very popular way to communicate. And we have six items here as well. Printers? But you said we got them from another department. No, mobile phones, paid for by the company. I remember that for our agents out in the field, they used to use landline phones belonging to the clients. Okay, we also ordered lots of lighting equipment, but that can be expected. I'm not worried about that. Twenty-seven lamps and over thirty-four fluorescent lights. And we needed thirteen new mouses as well to replace some of the old ones. All of the replacement computers had screens, very nice screens. But some of them lacked mouses. Well, at least it wasn't thirteen fans like the marketing department has just asked for. All right. So basically, the amount of equipment ordered last year was quite considerable, but it was all necessary.
All right, hello everyone. Now you're all here to learn about the trip to Arthur Island. As you might know, the population is about seven thousand. That's permanent residents, a far cry from the early days when some seventeen thousand people lived there. But the advantage of a declining population is that the island has maintained its natural attractions. So now, in the summer, the population swells to twenty-two thousand as tourists flock to this lovely little place to enjoy all it has to offer. It's an interesting fact that Arthur Island was once very isolated, with only a rickety wooden bridge connecting it to the mainland. Heavy trucks could not pass over. As could be seen by the accident in 1971, when the bridge broke, this resulted in the new bridge being built. Construction starting in 1972, finishing two years later, and since then business has boomed for the tourism industry. This was helped by the motor racing circuit built there in the 1980s and the reputation for fresh seafood caught directly from the island's waters, and the famous native wildlife. Such as koalas and emus, although I would say, people being ruled by their stomachs, it is the food which really brings them in. Now the tour bus leaves quite early, six in the morning, and it's a long trip. But you'll really enjoy just looking at the beautiful scenery from the window. Still, we understand that you'll need to stretch your legs at some point. For this reason, we used to stop at the Emu Park Wildlife Sanctuary. Until Arthur Island developed its own sanctuary, rendering that former stop off somewhat redundant. Now we stop at the Bass Guest House next to the very interesting Worm Farm, which you're invited to visit, thus learning all about those humble little creatures. And if you're interested in bigger wildlife, please remember that you'll need to pay the wildlife park entrance fee on the island, so budget for that. Another important point is not to eat too many of the complimentary biscuits with your free tea on the bus, since you should keep your appetite intact so that you can indulge in some of the great eateries on the island. For example, at the famous Reggie's Restaurant. All right, you know about the history of Arthur Island and the details of our tour there. So let me now tell you a bit about the specific sites and attractions on the island itself. It's a small place, but there's a lot packed in there. If you want to cuddle a koala, the wildlife park is the first place to go. That's on the most easterly point, a small promontory sticking out into Bass Strait. But be careful; the wind can be very strong. Hold on to your hats, literally. By that time, you'll probably be ready to eat, and you could choose between Reggie's Restaurant or eating at the Nature Reserve. Or at some of the restaurants right in the middle of the island, if it's Reggie's you want, take the complimentary bus down to the southern tip. Reggie's is right on the port, taking its famous seafood directly from the boats. How fresh is that? But to save time, you could go northwards to the very opposite point of the island and eat at the restaurant in the nature reserve. Then go and see the beautiful coastal scenery there. And what better way to do this than cycling? There are many trails, and Anderson's Beach also offers some beautiful opportunities for cyclists, as well as for swimming and surfing, of course. Get the bicycles, however, on the opposite side of the island, in the main township. Finally, you might want a reminder or souvenir of your trip. Obviously, there are souvenir shops all over the island, with many at Anderson's Beach. But the main spread of tourist shops is centrally located and right on the main road, so that they are accessible to everyone, no matter where you are. Yes, at Arthur Island, you'll find everything you want to do and more. Now, do you have any questions?